Welcome to Axel South. So, I have decided that I might be releasing videos more often. Now, so this video is about plants. Another one of my feed videos. So, I, today I'll be showing you... This is the same day that I edited the video of me making the snow cone. So, if you haven't watched that, go back and check it out. It's one of my... I've been newly released video, so I'm gonna show you some of the plants in the Pacific Northwest where we live that you can eat. Don't eat things without your parents' permission or unless you look it up, especially if they're in the wild. So, number one on the list, there's miner's lettuce. This is miner's lettuce. It's this little stuff like that it has these little leaves sometimes little flowers little pink stem tastes great great for salads kind of sweet and at the very end of the stem like right here has a tad of bitter pretty good in salads like with the dressing my mom makes it's really good so grab a handful of that Just make sure you have the good leaves, then snap it off at the bottom. Give some miner's lettuce. So, there's that. Some of the miner's lettuce gets really big. Like twice this long. Which is like some of the biggest I've seen it. So. Number two on the list, there is, let me find some, I don't know what this is called. I forgot what it's called, but I know it's edible because I've been eating it for a while and a wild edible specialist came here and told us it was edible. So we call it um, licorice carrot. It tastes kind of like licorice. It has these little seed pods on a little stem like that. It tastes a tad like licorice. Not as sweet. It's nature's licorice. Tastes great. Some of that. Mm. One right here. That. That. That in the pot. Third on the list, there is. Hmm. So, what I'm doing right now is I'm just looking around, scanning the area for plants that I know. Like this wild strawberry. It's not in season yet. There's the leaves, flower. They grow these tiny miniature strawberries that, when they're ripe, they're white. It's kind of weird. They're literally white. Pure white. The seeds are white, I'm pretty sure. No, actually, they might be green or yellow. Anyways, fourth on the list is... Let me find some. More my news letters. Big. Yeah, let me. Fourth on the list is chickweed. It grows in a lot of different places. It just looks like little leaves, long stems. It tastes pretty good. It's like really chewy lettuce. It has like a weird, weird taste that I can't quite describe. It's pretty good though, especially in the salads. Mm. Grab some of this stuff. Mm. 
fourth of all, or fifth, there is French sorrel, which just looks kind of like that. It's sour with a little bit of sweet. It's like imagine a bunch of, imagine biting into a lemon with honey all over it. That's kind of what it tastes like, except a little bit more sour or sweet. I mean. Let's do that. Good to go. Put that in the pot too. Six blackberries, twirling blackberries. They're not in season. They're just these little blackberries, and they just trail all over the ground. Sometimes they can like climb up trees all the way up to the top of that. And then seventh, there's the cut leaf blackberry. They are my favorite of the season. They don't get too sweet, and when they're unripe, they're not too sour. So it's a perfect amount of sweet. And then there's the Himalayan. They're really, really sweet. Not the best. And yeah, my favorite, my second, third favorite berries are these thimble berries. Bees pollinate them, like that one. There's a lot of nectar in that one. That is a honeybee. There's the flowers, the leaves. It, the berries look kind of like a thimble. They're like red. Just look up thimble berries and you'll see what they look like. And then ninth, tenth. I forgot what one it is. There is watercress. Slugs like to live on them. So. You can just pick off the leaves, like that. It tastes like, not the best. Hmm. Not the best at first, but the aftertaste is good and solid. It's like kind of spicy. Oh, really spicy actually. Put that in the pot. And then there is wood sorrel. It tastes kind of like French sorrel, except better. It's more sweet and... It's like French sorrel, except a little bit more sweet. Add some of that to the pot. So if you don't know what we're doing after we get all this stuff, we're going to make a small salad. With... Homemade dressing. My mom can't make this dressing because we don't have all the ingredients for it. Well, we do, but it takes like half an hour to make, so. Yep, that's enough. Add that to the pot too. And probably like 11th or 12th on the list is stinging nettle. Like this stuff might look like not edible or stuff like that. It might sting really bad when you touch it. But if you grab it with your sleeve, like that, just grab the leaf, and then you like get it in your sleeve, squish it up, just really, really mash it. It turns into that. It looks the same, except it doesn't have all those tiny little, if you look closely, you'll see tiny, tiny little needles on it, right there, under the leaves, not on top of the leaf. It tastes exactly like a green bean, literally. There's no difference I can tell of that than a green bean. And this is 13th, I think. 
fiddlehead fern. Well, this is actually ostrich fiddlehead. It's a certain type of fiddlehead fern that you can eat. You just get the top off and you can just break it off a little bit under, but only like only on the parts that are like curly at the end. So that and like a couple inches below, that's good to eat. But you have to cook it. We will not be eating this today. Oh. <laughs> you can't eat it raw, but it tastes like it's like eating bitter slug goo. Bit crunchy bitter slug goo. And then thirteenth is dock. Broad leaved dock. Right here. You can eat that, not raw. Again. And then it tastes pretty good. It tastes like kind of sour, but it's like just a tiny bit of sour and it's kind of like soft and pretty good. Fiddlehead, when it's cooked, it tastes like, I can't describe it. It's It just tastes really good. It's like kind of soft too. It's like soft and crunchy at the same time. And like 15, 14th, yeah, 14th is the broad-leaved sorrel. So broad-leaved sorrel is a type of sorrel that you can, like, grow in gardens and stuff. It's It tastes like wood sorrel or French sorrel. It's a little bit... It tastes a little bit more like French sorrel than wood sorrel, but this is pretty good. So, kind of rip it up into like small pieces, rip small parts of leaves off. So right now, we barely have to use any of this. We're only using four leaves, not even four leaves, like three and two quarters of a leaf or three and two thirds. And then there's leeks. I'm not gonna pick the. I'm not gonna pick these because I really want them to grow. But I'll pick a tiny piece of one of them, or like off of two of them. One stem, two stem, three stem, four stem, and then five stem. So these five little things right here. It tastes like pretty spicy. And then this is celery that was from last year. We'll get one, two, three small stems of this because we don't want to even eat any of it right now. But And then there's dill. Get one. Two stems. It tastes like, well, it tastes like dill. This is Italian parsley. Pick it off, kind of shake it off, make sure there's no slugs on it. Now, if you live in like Texas or somewhere like that, you might not have to worry about slugs very much. But since we're in Washington, we have to worry about slugs a lot. <laughs> a little bit of cilantro. And then that is just about it. There's one more ingredient. Can't use very much of it. Lettuce. So pick one, go like to the very bottom, pick off one leaf. Mm. Very bottom, pick off one leaf. And we're gonna do like one leaf from a couple different plants. Oh, another slug. Goodbye. And, oh, no you don't. That's just regular lettuce. This is red butterhead lettuce.
This is romaine lettuce, like the romaine lettuce you get at the store. We, none, not really anything in the garden is fully grown except for like that parsley plant. And that's not even fully grown, it'll get bigger. Now we have every single ingredient we need for our tub. Oh, that lettuce. Tastes quite yummy. So yeah, that's all the ingredients we need for our small salad. I will see you at the time of the dressing. We have all the salad ingredients now in this little pail. We have the bowl. We have the vinegar. This is just a standard vinegar and oil dressing we usually make. Number one ingredient, salad stuff. So I'm gonna set you guys up right here. Ingredients, number one, romaine lettuce. Number two, red butterhead lettuce. And a little bit more. No, number two, yeah, red butterhead lettuce, we only have a little bit. Number three, butter crunch lettuce. That's butter crunch, it tastes pretty good. Number four, cilantro. Number five, Italian parsley. Make it Italian parsley, number five. Number six, dill. Dill is one of the main ingredients. Tastes pretty strong and it tastes really good. Mm. Number five, more Italian parsley. Number seven, mm, celery. We have carrots in our garden, but they were not fully grown, sadly. Number eight, broad leaved sorrel. We only want a little bit of that stuff because it is pretty, pretty sour. So we got a bit too much. So that down the trash. And number eight or nine, watercress. Number 10, wood sorrel. Number 11, or number nine again, more, more watercress. Number 10, um, French sorrel. Number 11, if any of you have ever heard of green onion, this is the same thing, except it's green leek. Leeks are these like big onions, but they're like straight. They're straight up and down. They're like not big bulbs, onion bulbs. Just like straight up and down. Number nine, I think. Chickweed. Chickweed's pretty hard to um, like rip apart, so. What we do is we just snip it with scissors. Snip it twice. And then there is number 13, one of my favorite ingredients. I've never put this in salad. That carrot stuff.
That's one of my favorite foods, that carrot stuff. Number 11, miner's lettuce. Or number 13, miner's lettuce. Number 15, mix. And then, number 17. This is basically a salad of most of the plants I know. So now, we will get a fork. And then we will get the salt. So this is how to make it. You just get any salad ingredients you want. Couple shakes of salt, maybe not that much, but around that much, maybe a little bit less, or a little bit more, depending on if you want to taste the salt, to taste more, I'm gonna taste it anyway, but. <clears throat> this is, this apple cider vinegar is unfiltered, unpasteurized, organic apple cider vinegar diluted with water to 5% acidity. So this is just apple cider vinegar. That might have been a bit too much. Don't use white vinegar. Use apple cider vinegar or some other kind of edible vinegar. Olive oil. Mix. Number 16, 17, 18, mix. No, number 19 is mix. Mix with the, no, number 20 is mix. We did the mix without dressing. Salt, olive oil, or vi salt, vinegar, olive oil. That was 19. And mix again, mix with dressing. 20. So this is what the result looks like. Oh, that smells strong. So I'm going to surprise my dad with the salad, so. This stuff is good for salads. Let's taste test this salad. Mix it a little bit more. Oh, forgot one ingredient. Number one ingredient, knife. Number two ingredient, bag of baby carrots. You don't have to have baby carrots. I prefer big carrots, but we only have baby carrots. One or two slices of apple. I prefer three, but. <laughs> For a salad this big, it's best to do three, but we don't have very many apples, so. That. That. And then make small slices of that. These are good apple chunks for salads. They taste pretty good in salads too. There's the sour vinegar stuff and there's the sweet apple. I prefer cucumbers in my salad too, but sadly we do not have any. We usually have like 10 cucumbers on hand. Because me and my sister eat like two a day. Apples, done. How you do it. You just chop them two times. And you do this to like six carrots. This is a very long baby carrot. This is like one of the longest I've seen in a couple months. So this will give four slices instead of three. And like three more carrots. Four more carrots. Anyway, for a salad this size, do around this many carrots. And then it's also good to do maybe like some berries, slice some berries. We're about to have strawberries that are ripe, but we don't have any yet. Get the carrots. 
put them in the salad. Apple pretty good. Would you like to do the taste test of the salad that I have made? Oh, you made salad. <gasps> mm -hmm. No way. It's really mm. good. Do mm. you like it? I do. Mm -hmm. That's great. Oh, it's so good with apple. Yeah, lettuce. It's really good with the apples. Get a little apple in there. That's pretty legit. Awesome. Miner's lettuce, chickweed, <laughs> carrots. When I can, mm. I will taste some now. I will taste some now. What is this mess? I will take some. Oh, that's good, Axel. Did you not have any yet, Axel? Mm -mm. Oh wow! Okay. That is amazing. Is that okay? some, Axel? <laughs> that's just that's amazing. There's no other way to describe it. That's just amazing. All right. Yes. Mm. My tears almost just came out. Oh yeah, they're loose tears. Mm -hmm. awesome. Nice. My tears are loose. Salad making. Ripper, I see you hopping it. Hopping it, hopping it. Hopping it, hopping it. Break it. This salad. Amazing, have some more. Oh, that is amazing. Yeah. All right, good job. Did you like it? I loved it. It was great. You're the best salad maker ever. Did you like it? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you like it? Mm -hmm. It was amazing. So, yeah, those are 15 different things. Seven of them we grow from their garden, I think. And, like, the other eight I just found in the wild. So, yeah. Agent X out. Agent Tex out. Agent Salad out. I mean, <laughs> Agent Trinity and Agent Rainbow out. Bye.